I will give you 10 reasons why moving to the S24 Ultra is a great idea, but where it makes sense, I'm also gonna give you a counter argument so we can keep things nice and balanced here. I'm not really a big fan of the tone of saying, you know, you should or shouldn't do something. At the end of the day, I'm just a guy on the internet. But I have used iPhones for over 15 years and have recently been able to switch to Android. Or at the very least, I've been able to mix my ecosystem and find decent solutions that work for me. So this video is more of a guidance for you, really, if you're undecided, or perhaps you are thinking of moving from Apple, this video is for you. I personally found Samsung stuff to really suit my needs right now, but there are plenty of other options out there, many of which I haven't actually tried myself. Samsung doesn't sponsor me or sends me any of this stuff for free, so where I think there are better options for you, I'll definitely let you know. Let's start with reason one, which is the display. Look, I'm not saying that the iPhone display is bad now, it's a beautiful display with excellent colors in it. But when you pick up the new S24 Ultra, this is gonna give you a feeling that I can only describe as, you know, when you're shopping for a new car or for a new house, and you get into that new car that has everything that your current car has, but it feels much nicer. And I think that's because the display is just superior in terms of, you know, the hardware in here. You can go up to 2,600 nits in terms of brightness. And even here, right, there's a little bit of daylight coming in here. And I don't know if you can tell, it looks amazing. The iPhone doesn't look bad at all, but when I look at the S24 Ultra, it's just more pleasing to look at with very little distractions. It's beautiful. There is a but, and you won't hear this from a lot of YouTubers at the moment, and I don't think it's that serious of a problem, but I should warn you that the current colors on this display on the S24 Ultra in certain situations, like on the UI icons, are not accurate. They're bright, they're beautiful, <laughs> but they're not accurate. You don't see this color inaccuracy when watching content or looking at photos. Like I said, this is a beautiful display. I call myself scientifically proved the color issue to you. I don't have the tools in here. And Samsung does claim that, you know, they have achieved certification from VDE Germany for 100% color volume in the DCI P3 color range. But a quick sort of rabbit hole trip down Reddit should tell you that, you know, I'm not the only one noticing that there's a bit of a washed out interface, especially when you compare it with the previous S23 Ultra. I mean, you probably can't tell it on the camera. I've tried this before. It's really difficult to tell, but to the naked eye, I can definitely tell that the colors are more vibrant on the interface when you're using the S23 Ultra. Why don't we hear more about this on YouTube? We'll be right back. When you're watching content, especially when you've got lights involved, can you see the reflections on the iPhone here versus the S24 Ultra, you can actually watch the content in all sorts of different situations without any issues. And it's bright and it's a yeah, gorgeous display. The next reason is Galaxy AI. I was a little bit skeptical, well, very skeptical before it came out. And I still think that there are some AI features on the S24 Ultra that arguably could just as well be implemented into older phones via software. In fact, some of the features that came out on Galaxy AI are now becoming available on things like you know, the Google Pixels, for example. But I wanna call out one thing, which is writing assist. This took about five minutes for me to realize this is an absolute must and I'm now using it all the time. Responding to comments on YouTube, my text messages, WhatsApp, Telegram, emails. I can just type anything as quickly as I can without worrying too much about grammar, spelling, and you can choose then to do a quick like grammar correction. But here's the coolest thing, which depending on the app I'm using, I can change the tone of the message. It will add the relevant social media hashtags, emojis. If it's a work email, I can choose a more professional tone. Or if I'm talking to my family, it can be a friendlier, more relaxed tone. This really is awesome. And the reason I like this is because it happens very quickly. Now, time to get real. Do you need a Galaxy S24 Ultra to enjoy something like this? No, and I'm sure Apple will eventually catch up with the rest of the world, and I'd be very surprised if the iPhone 27 doesn't come with AI features eventually. So this is where type AI will come in. On my iPhone, I don't have AI features in here and English is not my first language. Type AI is powered by the ChatGPT's API and you can just add it as a keyboard extension on your phone. This works on any platform or any app on your phone and it's super easy to install as you can see here. Once you install it, it just goes into your list of keyboards. My favorite thing is to use the tone changer. You might be in a rush and perhaps not have the time to type a long message without sounding a little bit abrupt or rude. So I just type roughly what I want to say and I let type AI do the rest for me. It's just brilliant, right? As you're typing, Type AI will also recommend words that will work as better choices for you to really help you express yourself properly. Honestly, this is a lifesaver. The other day, I wanted to write a letter of complaint to somebody. Check this out. I simply told Type AI within the keyboard itself what the problem was and what outcome I needed from this complaint. And a few seconds later, boom. I have an entire email in the tone that I chose. You can choose whether you're happy, you're angry or whatever. Pretty much it was ready to send in a few minutes. I mean, this is a great example when AI really starts to become really helpful for us in our day to day, right? But it doesn't stop there. It can also translate your messages in real time. Again, for me, that's really useful. So rather than just going to Google Translate or whatever, just do it within the keyboard itself 
a couple of clicks, this is genius. You can get a free trial of the premium version just by using the link in the description. Or if you're watching this from a TV, feel free to pause the video and scan the QR code here. And thanks so much Type AI for making this video possible. Now the next reason to switch will be the cameras. I'll have to split the camera section into other reasons as well, but the key reason for me is using pro modes. With the iPhone, you can definitely take incredible shots and using some camera apps that you can download from the App Store. The reason I like the Pro Photos on the S24 Ultra is the sheer amount of option controls that we get out of the box, you know, within the camera app itself. Having all these Pro options in here is really useful to, you know, kind of if you want to explore photography in general or learn more about smartphone photography. It's not like a professional camera, but it's the next best thing. For instance, we can control the ISO, the shutter speed, the white balance, and this is just a pro mode. If that's not enough for you, you can go to Expert Raw, or you have even more settings to play with. You can add a virtual ND filter, control multiple exposures, go into astrophotography as well here with a built-in sky guide. That's just insane. Well, it's useful if you're not here in the UK. I mean, it's fantastic though, right? And sticking with photos for now, the next reason to change to the S24 Ultra is portrait mode. This one could be a little bit controversial because I know how good the portrait shots are on the iPhone. This device is pretty solid when it comes to portrait shots, whether in decent light or low light. There's some amazing shots that you can do here. But if you are thinking of moving to an Android device like the S24 Ultra and portrait is the thing that is holding you back, I'd say, don't worry. Honestly, the portrait shots on the S24 Ultra are just as good, if not better than the iPhone. I do need a better looking model here for the channel, but even using my old mug here in the shots, it's a very pleasing look. Not over sharpened like you used to be. Fantastic edge detection. It doesn't really fail that much on, on people. You do get some odd issues with things like glass and kind of plants and things like that. But for people, like I said, it's just as good, if not better than the iPhone now. There is one problem though that I've noticed that is before you take the shot. You're gonna go into the preview and you're gonna go, what the heck is this? It's like, I've been scammed. That's what you're gonna think because it looks awful. Especially with people portraits, I haven't seen any video talking about this and maybe it's just me, but the edge around the person is moving around. You know, this, it's really disconcerting. The look on the viewfinder you know, on the preview looks quite low res as well. It looks almost like you just got a phone from wish.com, right? But when the photo is processed after you press the shutter, oh my gosh, it's, it's like magic. It's like, how, how did a preview, which was crap, look so good? So yeah, don't be alarmed by what you see when it's, before you take the shot because right now it does look a little bit weird and I hope that Samsung does something about it. Still within this camera category, another reason to switch is the different modes that you get just by default without having to install anything. When I first started dabbling with Android phones, you know, I've been using iPhones for all my life, it was really the S21 Ultra where I noticed this. The camera app for me was just fun to use. It sounds silly and almost like superficial, but there are so many cool options in here, some of which I don't really use myself, but a great example that I do use a lot is taking photos of my son and my pet. So they're always moving. You can never tell when they're gonna do something cute, right? So sure, you can do the live photo on the iPhone and on the S23 Ultra as well, the S24 Ultra, you can do live photos. But that's a single shot. You're quite limited to that angle that you took the shot with. With this mode named single take, you just have to point the camera for 10 seconds. It will capture everything. They moved over here behind you, no problem. Literally just, just point the camera without having to do anything. At the end of those 10 seconds, it will start generating these really cool different shots. There's stuff in there that I'm not gonna use, but it's just fun to have it. And you know, whenever you do need to kind of do something a little bit different, that mode, that single take mode is fantastic. Oh, what was that? I was gonna say something. And we are gonna talk about video modes in just a minute. But before we do that, can I just focus on audio for a little bit here? The microphone quality on the S24 Ultra, I knew they were gonna improve it. They always, you know, slightly improve, but they didn't just slightly improve it here. It's ridiculous how much better it is now. I kind of noticed it in my initial reviews where I was doing some stuff outside and it was very windy. And I thought that there's nothing that's gonna save this audio here. Let's just listen to it in a more controlled environment, which is you know, what you're probably gonna do with it. This is the audio quality when using the front facing camera, the selfie camera. And this is the audio quality using the camera at the back, which is the one I normally use. Please bring pizza pronto. But there will be times when you need to be away from the phone. And this is when you might want to use a microphone like the one I'm using right now. So you're not relying so much on the microphone within the camera itself. This is one specifically for, I think, uh, smartphone usage. You can use this with cameras as well. I'm gonna do a proper review on this, 
But yeah, I've been using this in all my reviews for the S24 Ultra already. Another great reason to go to the S24 Ultra is the ability to use Galaxy AI, right? Generative AI to edit your photos. This is nothing new and a lot of the processing is happening in the cloud actually, right? So it's not really about the phone, but it's still nothing short of amazing. And the results here can really save your pictures. I'm not saying this is about to replace Photoshop or Lightroom, but for your social media posts and for your family photos, sometimes you go, you take a photo and you go later, you go, oh my gosh, are we, who the hell is that random person in there? I actually had that myself for my wedding photo. You know, what is she doing here? Just kidding. But you know what I mean? What I noticed with the S24 Ultra though, is that it's become really hard to tell it's being processed. The counter argument on this one is you don't need the S24 Ultra. The Google Pixel A Pro can do this. You know, many other Android phones can do this already. And there are also apps that you can download that will do this for you as well. It's a nice feature, but it's becoming widely available. And I wouldn't be surprised if the iPhone brought that in iOS. 27 perhaps. And there is one thing that I wish Samsung would do as well, which is to give us more than just one option. So when you do the edit, you know, you wait for the result to come back and you get one result. Most of the time that result is good, but if you ask it again, if you do the same edit again, you will get a slightly different result. So sometimes I wish those two options were given and you can pick the one that you prefer. But as a first version of this, I'm pretty impressed. Now, if you're the kind of person who still uses your phone, you know, for work, to get things done, this next reason is for you productivity. The ability to get work done on the S24 Ultra is really incredible. I'm not even scratching the surface of what is possible here. I'm doing a separate video on Samsung DeX alone very soon. But even if we just look at the ability to efficiently run multiple apps at the same time, you know, sometimes you see some people show some examples that go, come on, who, who does that? But here, you know, I'm actually showing you examples that I do use on a daily basis, right? In a split screen setup. It's beyond me why Apple won't let us do this on the iPhone because it's such a lifesaver. Like, you know, it could be a simple thing like reading an article and making some notes. Like, you know, this is basic stuff. Actually notes now, just a little bit of an aside here. Taking notes with AI now on the S24 Ultra is insane. You know, you can summarize things for work stuff. It's really incredible. A very real use the other day for productivity was, you know, I was out and about and I had to quickly sign a contract. So, you know, I got this email, I had this PDF, but I had to refer to things. I had to refer to old emails, make sure that before I signed it, I had everything checked out. Really useful stuff. You could be referring to a video, to a photo, to a message on WhatsApp, whilst transferring money using your banking app. And this reason alone could be enough of a reason for you to do it. I know sometimes you go, I'm happy with my iPhone. If I want to do the work, I go to my laptop. And I, I'm with you. I'm honestly, I've, I've had iPhones all my life and I know the beauty of the iPhone. There are many good reasons to just stay on the iPhone and use an iPad or a MacBook for, for something else. And that's what Apple want you to do as well, right? They want you to have a multitude. Anyway, I mentioned the S Pen a couple of times already, but I do think it deserves its own section here in this video as a good reason to move to the S24 Ultra. I never had the note and I'm personally still quite new to the whole idea of using an S Pen. But you go from this phase of thinking, okay, it's just a style to then going, oh, this is cool. You can do this with the S Pen. You know, you can use it as a clicker. You can do all sorts of things with air gestures. It made a lot of sense on the Fold. You know, I've been using the Fold for two years now, but the more I use it on the Ultra, the more I appreciate it. And now I know when people say to me, the note is amazing. And I remember looking at them going, my iPhone is amazing, what are you talking about? Now I know, because I know the power of the S Pen. Just showing you a few examples here on, on how to screenshot with Air Command using a magnifying glass, a screen off memo, which is one of my favorite things to do. And of course, you know, when you write someone's telephone number or a website down like youtube.com forward slash Alex Tech, I won't even try to cover everything that the S Pen does in this video, but here's the beauty of YouTube, right? If you want the most comprehensive video about the S Pen, at least it's the one that I've seen, literally on the entire YouTube platform, go and see my friend Daniel from Tech with Benefits. Yeah, he's a master of Samsung stuff. And this S Pen video is a must if you want to really explore what it can do. Just a quick one. And I just want to apologize for the lack of editing here. My usual edit, I love editing videos, but I wanted to get this video to you as quickly as possible. So I kept the editing to a minimum at this time. YouTube is not my full-time job. This is my Saturday evening right now after a long week of working and I still have to edit this video. So apologies, but I'm gonna try and get this out as quickly as possible to you. Now, this next reason is very close to my heart and it's potentially quite controversial as well because it's video quality. And we know that iPhones are fantastic for video quality. So for me to try to persuade you to move away from an iPhone because video quality is a good thing on the S24 Ultra, I know I could be reaching here. And I do have a counter argument for this as well and a word of caution as well, but let me share with you first why I think this is a good reason to move to the S24 Ultra. When you go into pro video and you start exploring all the options that we get here with 
you know, the camera itself without having to install any third party apps, without having to have any tools. You know, I mean, the results can be amazing. I'm preparing a comparison video, just focusing on pro video alone, you know, like ProRes on the iPhone and, you know, pro video modes on the S24 Ultra, but I'm super impressed by it. But I will say this, whatever we do here with the S24 Ultra, I mean, I've seen some results on, online that's like, oh my gosh, you know, some people really know what they're doing. I'm, I'm kind of still learning, but whatever you do with the S24 Ultra, it's still for me not going to be as good as ProRes Log on the iPhone. The quality of video that you can create with ProRes Log on the iPhone is just insane, right? It just gives you too much power to then, you know, kind of add your own colors. And if you know what you're doing, ProRes Log, it's the next best thing before you buy a professional camera for video. The downside is that you would need to know what you're doing when you edit that footage. You know, afterwards, you're going to have to use your LUTs, know what to do to color grade it. And if you're a content creator, you already know what to do and you know how to do that, you've done that before. But for most people, ProRes and Log is just an option in there that you think, okay, you know, as a party trick, you go, look at what I can do here, but you're never gonna use it again in, in anger. That aside, the key differentiator for me on the S24 Ultra is the new ways of recording video and interacting with video as well after you recorded it. You know, that on the S24 Ultra, it just gives us something a little extra. And there are three things that I wanna call out here, dual recording, 8K video and 120 FPS videos. These three things have made videos on the S24 Ultra so much fun, quite powerful as well. And for social media stuff, you know, just the dual recording thing is incredible. You know, in my videos, I sometimes, you know, put my face on the corner here just to try and keep connected with you as much as possible. This mode it achieves exactly that. I mean, there's all sorts of different ways you could use this mode for. It could be showing something in video whilst capturing your own reaction to something amazing that you're seeing. So your audience, you know, they're seeing you as well as what you're showing them. It doesn't have to be the selfie camera either. You can choose any camera. So effectively, you could have like two videos, one zoomed in and one wide shot. And if you choose to save those two separate files, that's an option as well. You can then in the edit later, make it look like you have two cameras. That's really, really cool. AK video is no longer a gimmick. I mean, I've been saying this for quite some time. The S23 Ultra was the first smartphone that was like, okay, AK is a real thing. I've done a full video on AK and uploaded it. And it's amazing, right? I was already impressed at how good it looked. Just handheld, no effect, just out of the camera into YouTube and I was like, geez, you know, that was amazing. And it's only got better now. I've been having a lot of fun with this mode and I wouldn't blame you for saying that, hang on, we can't watch 8K unless you have an 8K TV or something. Still looks amazing though, even on a normal monitor, 8K versus 4K, you know, you, you see the difference. It's very smooth. There's a lot of detail in there and just looks great. Which brings me to the 120 FPS mode. I love, the, it's not really a mode, it's just an option, but I love the fact that you can record 120 frames per second on a phone. I mean that is still blows my mind. I would like for this mode to have its own editing controls though. I mean, at the moment you get these tiny little things. I mean, if you have really tiny fingers, we do get some toggles here to change the speed. And I think it adds a little bit of a speed ramp as well, which is cool. And I love that you can add multiple changes of the speed. You can say, for example, in this bit here, I want it quarter of speed, then normal, and then I don't know, half speed. So you can do different speeds within the same clip. That's awesome. But I'd love for these controls to be way bigger and just easier to adjust. And like, hey, have its own slow-mo editing mode. That would be awesome. Why did you end here? Now, I've been giving you counter arguments, but I also have three separate reasons here and why you might wanna be a little bit careful when thinking about switching to the S24 Ultra. The first one is budget. And I have to police myself here not to get overexcited with tech and recommend you kind of go bankrupt and buy everything, right? If you're already on the S23 Ultra or maybe the 15 Pro Max even, or the 14 Pro Max or the Pixel 8 Pro, one of these newer, like one, two year old devices, my honest recommendation, only switch if it makes sense financially for you. All these great features that I called out today are worth the money, but not if you're losing out on an exchange, right? I wouldn't recommend you do that. Even if it's like a hundred, two hundred dollars, it's money that you could spend somewhere else unless your work depends on it and you're gonna generate business by doing that work with the, with the latest and greatest. The S23 Ultra is still a very capable phone. The 15 Pro Max is an amazing phone too. The other one is video quality. I've been impressed by the S24 Ultra and what you can do here. But remember when I said there was a word of caution about video, I've seen some micro jitters on 8K and also some warping on video. And especially if you're using the 5X camera, it feels to me like it's a software issue. Be aware of that, that you know, you don't buy the phone and then go, Alex never mentioned this. I'm just saying, 
there's something in there. I don't have any contact with Samsung, then they don't tell me what they're doing. I bought this myself, just like any consumer. And the other reason to be cautious here about the S24 Ultra is ergonomics. I'm used to big phones. I've been using the bigger phones since they were a thing. And even I am starting to feel my hand sometimes, and especially in the pinky area. I mean, during these days when I'm testing the phone, doing lots of things for hours and hours, at the end of the day, I do feel my hands getting a little bit strained just by using the phone, you know, for hours and hours. With the S24 Ultra, it's not just the fact that it's a big boy, because because it is, but it's very sharp as well. There's some really sharp corners in here. So for longer sessions, you may want to consider a comfy case to go with it or some sort of skin, something that will make it more comfortable to hold. And you're in luck because my next video, I've already recorded it, I'm just editing right now. It will be exactly about the accessories that I use, not just cases, but things that will make the S24 Ultra more efficient as well. And while you wait for that, I did a mega comparison between the iPhone 15 Pro Max. It was just a round one for now, but this head to head is quite a popular video. So that's over here. And YouTube reckons you're gonna like one of these ones here. And I hope to see you there. Cheers.